All right, I'm gonna put a couple of my patterns down, my, my metal dies, so I can get these things cut out the way I want them. Try to save as much, as much on these, uh, as much on this leather as, 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 as possible and use every bit of it that I can. that pop you know that they've come on out so this is six ounce leather that I make my knife cases out of and on to step two my next step is I take my my pouch the, the pattern for my pouch and then I take my thing and I scribe my stitch line and it gives me the you know the pattern for my for my pouch all right then what I do is I take my groover and I come and I Stitch me a groove for my stitch line all the way around. And what this will do is give me a nice <clears throat> uniform stitch line that I can follow all the way around the edge. All right. Then what I do is I wet my leather. Once the leather's cased and <clears throat> like I want it, Take my put me just a, an inside line right right on the edge of my stitch line <clears throat> that way I can get up to that without actually getting on my stitch line I do that on both sides now this is not the only way to do this um, May not be the best way to do this. This is just this is just the way I do it. So <clears throat> it kind of gives me a thing, and then I just kind of freehand this this bottom then I just get anywhere on here that I want to get. Start me a uh, put me a scribe line. And this is what it looks like so far. So then I know that I'm going to basket weave this one. So I come in here and I start anywhere here on, on this middle. And then start my basket wheel on this line here. And 
And one of these days, I'm going to get me a, actually build me a shop right now. I'm in my, <clears throat> in my home office. I use it, I use it for my home office. I use it for my reloading room when I'm working on guns. I use it for that. Whenever I uh, do my leather work, I use it for that. It's, it's kind of like a all-purpose room. And I would love to eventually build me a shop. But right now, uh, with lumber prices the way they are, I just can't see myself building a, sh a shop right this minute. So, and you can kind of see pattern coming along. Yeah. Yeah, I just carried that on up to the top of the, the sheath. That's where I scribed my line at. In my pouch. And as you get close to close to the edge, you know, you want to kind of back off a little bit. When you get close to these edges, you kind of got to tilt your, <clears throat> you got to tilt your, uh, your stamp and figure out how it's going to go on here and <coughs> try not to get over that line because if you do, it's just going to make it not look as uniform and nice. But, you know, I would like to try to bring y'all more leather making uh, videos. And you can comment, comment down below and tell me if you would uh, like to see more of the leather making stuff or um you know <coughs> trying to talk and and do these uh basket weeds at the same time <coughs> can get confusing they are You know, you can kind of get off track if you're not careful with your basket weight. Let's see. I'm trying to get, trying to get this where... Y'all can see it the best as possible. I don't have the best setup for filming all this, but hopefully y'all will be able to see what I'm doing and maybe uh, take a little something from it at least. I don't know. Hope I went over on that one, but let's see. Do a try to do a much better job when I'm actually going to sell it or something. Uh, this one is not going to be for sale. This one is just um, strictly for this video. I'll I'll put a I'll put a one of my own knives in it or something. But then you come in with a. A nice, uh, like a border stamp tool. And, uh, so what I'll do is I'll, let's see where I'm going to start. I'll start right here on this edge. That's all going to do. I forgot to, uh. Forgot to do this on this one, but you really should tape up the back of your whatever you're working on. I usually tape it up with some 
blue <coughs> painter's tape. And that'll keep your design from, from uh, spreading out. You know, when you, when you cut these things, ideally you want to keep them the same size because you're trying to make them together. And if you, like with me doing this, it's probably going to spread this one out a little bit which in the end makes a little more work for for me because I I'll, I'll have to sand my edges now probably and uh where I you know to make them fit properly <clears throat> I'll kind of show you that's what we're looking at and since I didn't put my tape on the back it may not it may have spread the leather out just enough to where I'll, you know, I'll have to put something on that or whatever, but it, maybe not. We'll see. We'll see uh, <clears throat> when we get that far. So anyway, so I'll, I'll put this one to the side now and I will um, let, well, actually, yeah, I'm going to wet this leather on the back side. You want to try to get a uniform uh, color across the whole thing, especially if you're going with a light color. You need the uh, when you case your leather, you, in, to avoid having a water stain or water spot on here, you want to do it till it's all one nice looking color. And uh, for this next step, I am going to have to step off camera to do my maker's mark because of where my anvil's set up. I don't have a um, you know a good a good way to show you that all right now that my maker's mark is done i'm gonna come in I'm gonna come come through here put me some some barge contact cement along the edges And this will help get it stuck together for gluing and and uh, <clears throat> just kind of help everything go together when I get ready to sew it up. You gotta be careful coming down here on the bottom. You want a kind of a thin, thin line. You don't want to take too much of your uh, where you'll be putting your uh, knife at. It'll close the pouch up on you a little bit. Now we'll let that dry for a minute or two until it gets kind of tacky. See, it's kind of just kind of leave that middle piece open. All right, I've let it dry for a couple minutes, and now I'll go ahead and start trying to put it together. I want to keep it as you know the best you can, even with everything. Nice. All right. What I do is I just kind of give it a few taps with a flat hammer. And you 
you kind of got a back and a front now. And uh, the edges are pretty smooth, but we'll, we'll smooth those down on the next step. Well, in a few steps, but right now we're going to let the glue dry and then we'll get it ready for sewing. There we go all sewed up and I'll move on to the next step which is cutting all these strings off all right now that I'm done with the sewing I'll cut off my ends and I'll take a lighter and I burn the ends. Like that. Like that. Come on the back side, do that. This bonded nylon thread sews up pretty good and uh, now on to the next step which is to I like to take my beveler bevel the edges finished look I think it's getting time to sharpen this blade And this will just kind of round off the edges, make them not so square. And not a 
fan of this new leather I've been using, but anyway, that'll kind of round them off. <clears throat> we kind of got this so far. So, now what I'll do is I'll collect all my junk, put my tool back up. All right, move on to the next step, which will be, um, I think I'll dye this one first. And then I will stamp them later. Well, I may stamp them first. I'll, I'll, I'll probably cut out my, my belt slots and then I'll dye them. Stay tuned. All right, now what I'll do is I will cut out my belt slots. Position it on here. Alright, All right. now we got the belt slots. We can uh, move on to the dyeing process. All right, now I'm gonna um, <clears throat> go ahead and dye this one. This is a Phoebe's Pro Dye Mahogany. It's a pretty popular color. I get a lot of requests for this mahogany color. Once it's dry, it's a pretty nice color. And uh, so that's what we're gonna do this one in. I like to swirl, uh, do circles, and it kind of gets in all these little cracks and crevices and everything from the stamping and the the uh, the thread actually takes a takes a nice dye also, and uh, kind of gives it a just a little bit different color, which I I usually like. With the pro dye, with the uh, the pro dye, you can you can go over it a couple times, and it's not gonna um, make it darker each time you go over it, like some of the other dyes will. So right now I'm just getting my edges and uh, making sure I've got a good good layer of uh, let the dye kind of soak in. Got a good layer of dye on it. And uh, so here's kind of a little bit closer to being finished. And uh, we'll come back on the next step. Let this dry for a few minutes. Okay, it's still in the drying process, but. I went ahead and put a case trapper in here so it will uh, kind of wet form to the knife and create retention which will hold the knife in you won't be able to pull it out and everything so or you won't be able to it won't fall out easily it'll be kind of locked in and uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and do the edges I'm gonna, um, burnish my edges and stuff with this here and uh, that'll kind of give it a finished look and we're just about finished with this. Um, you do have to be careful when it's still wet like this because these flaps, are, you know, they'll bend bend around a little bit and stuff. So um, normally I would just set it to the side and leave it like this. But for the sake of the video, I'm going to go ahead and do the edges. So here we go. <clears throat> and this is this will be what I'm using for for my edges. And uh, just get me a. Thing and I just dab a little on it. Mm. 
this will seal up your edges and um, let you be able to kind of have that glass effect sometimes and it's, it's it's not about how hard you do this part it's just getting tension uh, just getting the friction to kind of glass over your edges and uh, edges is probably my least favorite part to do um, just and the dog's going crazy but chihuahua if you've ever been around chihuahuas or know somebody with a chihuahua you know they think they they think they're a lot better than they are anytime something goes goes down the road or comes close to the house they think they gotta bark and act like like they're gonna do something although i will tell you um our little 20 pound chihuahua will chase pit bulls out of the yard my brother has a a belgian Mal malinois or however you say it and the chihuahua runs the place so just kind of slicking up these edges giving it a finished finished look and, uh, put the knife out right quick so I can do this top edge in there so it still retains the tension all right here we go um i'll still have to put a top coat on it but i'm gonna let it dry a little bit and i'll probably come back and show you the top coat on it but what i use is a uh is a tan coat by Phoebans. It, it does pretty good um you can also use uh, mink oil or if you want a gloss you can use the satellite um but uh Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more leather working videos on this channel, along with the shooting and everything, uh, um, let me know in the comments and let me know what you think about the knife sheath. And uh, I seem to, I sell a lot of these knife sheaths and I've never had anybody come back and tell me they didn't like them. So, um, uh, you know, I offer several different de designs. You can go to uh, my Instagram page is Ponderosa underscore leather i believe and and the uh, facebook page is ponderosa leather and you can also find me at my personal account jwheeler331 on instagram and uh but anyway I'll, I'll come back when when these when the when the top coat's ready to be put on and and uh, we'll finish this thing up all right now that this, this has some time to to dry for a little bit i'm gonna go come, go ahead and put some uh this Phoebe's tan coat on it and uh let's see I'm grab my little shirt here just to kind of smear it around with just kind of dab it all in there and get it on all the cracks this will waterproof it and uh 
protect it from the elements and This is pretty much the last step on these. Sometimes I'll do the edges, um, paint the edges black. But with this one, I think I'm just gonna leave it like it is. And uh, so I can kind of get this in and work it in a little bit. product actually I think I'm probably once this dries I'm probably gonna go ahead and shine it up with a little bit of uh, the satellite just to kind of give it that gloss um, not I don't like them too glossy I'll show you um, let's see let me put this lid back on this and I'll show you uh, here's another one I've done with the case logo for the you know, the Case XX logo for Case Knives. We've got these two that um, we finished up last night. And uh, so, but yeah, um, let me know if I can, uh, if you'd like to get one of these or, or you know, a Western holster for a gun or um, we do all kinds of stuff. Check out our Instagram page at uh, Ponderosa underscore leather and uh, Facebook page at at Ponderosa and uh, you know all right I thought I would show you um this is this is the finished product right here this is uh you know it's meant to wear on your belt um it's, you know I've added a little bit of a gloss to it it's not it probably looks more glossy in the on here because of the lighting but uh yeah so here's two more that's made also made for case trappers basket weave um, here's the other, like I told you, here's the, the case logo, I can do those, it, this one's a natural color, um, these are, uh, saddle tan, and this one is the mahogany, which kind of gives it like a dark plum look, it's probably looks more black in the, in the video, but it's actually kind of a dark mahogany plum looking color, so, but yeah, um, if you want one of these, you can reach me on Instagram at uh, my leather page at at uh, Ponderosa underscore leather or on Facebook, um, Ponderosa leather. So uh, if we can help you with one of these or something else uh, holster related, just let me know. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe.